Claire Fox here, Brexit Party MEP for the North West, and I'm actually here in Strasbourg for a parliamentary session. It's extraordinary being away from the general elections, and it's very peculiar because one of the things that we were talking about in Parliament this morning was the setting of the budget. Some of my colleagues spoke, but there was an extraordinary moment when one MEP refused to take a point of order from a Brexit Party MEP on the basis that oh, well, you're leaving anyway, so why should you have a say in it? Actually, that's a good thing because we are trying to leave the European Union after all, but it was said in a particularly unpleasant and nasty way. And one of the other things that's happening here at the moment is that there is going to be a discussion about the appointment of commissioners. The MEPs at this parliament get a chance to reject or rubber stamp those people put forward by the commission president and we're going to have a discussion about it tomorrow and I'm going to be speaking in that debate. But the thing that's really peculiar is, on the one hand, there's the you're not allowed to make your point of order petulance um, because you're leaving the EU. And on the other hand, there's a constant drip, drip feed of we're going to make it as difficult as possible. And one of the things that the rules-based EU are going to do is to force the UK to appoint a commissioner even though, in fact, we will be leaving on the 31st of January. And it's that kind of inflexibility, that rules-based pettiness that I think is most objectionable about the undemocratic parliament that we're involved in here. But I wanted to reflect as well on some of the things that are happening in the UK, because Ursula von der Leyen is going to proclaim and boast about the fact tomorrow that she has got the most diverse commission ever. The commissioners she's appointed include at least half of the commissioners are women, and that's supposedly diversity. No self-reflection at all on the fact that this is no diversity of opinion amongst those commissioners, let alone the fact that, guess what, they're all white. And I simply mention that, not because I want to play identity politics, but, but because last night there was a huge rally in Plymouth involving the Brexit Party prospective candidate for that area, Anne Widdicombe, with Nigel Farage speaking and with my fellow MEP, Christina Jordan speaking. And there was a very unpleasant crowd outside of anti-fa, anti-fascist, anti-racist, basically proclaiming that the people who were going into the uh, event in Plymouth were not welcoming of migrants, were effectively racist, and there were signs saying that they were fascists. This despicable labelling of people who want to leave the European Union as far right or racist misses completely the irony of me sitting in one of the least diverse uh, uh, parliaments that exists in the world. A largely white gathering of people that certainly does not reflect the millions and millions and millions of working class people throughout Europe, let alone the fact that there is a multitude of people from all around the world who live in Europe who are actually not reflected in this parliament at all. I also think it's ironic that that Antifa demo, and in fact I'm getting a lot of abuse on social media because I make this point, and people saying, yeah, but you're really involved in a, 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 an anti-immigrant party, in a racist party. I think the other thing that really uh, is galling about that is, is that that is being said on the very day that the chief rabbi in the UK pointed out that there is a serious problem of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. Now, I am not one for throwing around those labels glibly, but I do think before people start pointing fingers about where the racism lies, that we might reflect on the fact that the main left-wing opposition party in the UK has serious enough an anti-Semitism Semitic problem that it's being investigated and that the chief rabbi denounces it. And I don't think that's just playing politics. I know that, of course, labelling people anti-Semitic can be used simply to close down debate. But the lack of self-awareness and the whataboutery that immediately says the Tories are Islamophobic, uh, the Brexit Party are racist, would indicate that the Labour Party have not got any sense of their own weaknesses in relation to bigotry and uh, views uh, about minorities in society. So I say that because it's confusing in politics today, isn't it? The manifestos are out. We've actually seen the Tory party bring out a manifesto that effectively plays safe. They didn't want to upset anyone. A Labour party that's bought a hugely radical 
manifesto when it comes to the economy, actually with many policies that are fairly outlandish and appear to not be fully costed and certainly look a as though they're trying to buy voters. But you know, if you're on the left, as I am, you might be excited by what they've got to say. But how can I trust the Labour Party to ever implement anything radical in the UK at all when the one vote for a radical change in society, that was the vote in 2016 to leave the European Union, is one they turn their backs on? one they trash, one they won't have any responsibility for, one they're going to undermine through a second referendum, completely anti-democratic. And they've had the nerve to denounce their own Labour League voters, often from the north of England, as being bigots who should be ignored and put to one side. And then the Tory party, which brings out a perfectly respectable, safe, you know, some interesting policies in it in terms of its manifesto, actually refuses to go into any detail at all about the key issue of this election, which is Brexit. Because despite the fact that he's got some rather interesting proposals for a post-Brexit society, it refuses to acknowledge that in its claim that it wants to get Brexit done, oven ready, as fast as possible, it's as though Brexit's an embarrassment for the Conservative Party and a treaty and a deal which at the very best is shoddy, at the very best is likely to mean that we're tangled up with institutions even if, even if and I hope we do, technically leave on the 31st of January, is not exactly frank and honest with voters about the fact that they're not having the daring courage to actually just take us out of the European Union, as we should do, uh, with a clean break and won't really guarantee, I don't believe at this stage, uh, that they're going to have the courage to take on the EU in the transition negotiations and walk at the end of them if there's uh, no deal done. So where does that leave me? Well, one of the things that you could say at the end of all that is that left and right and all the political parties are absolutely, uh, have no uh, uh, traditional followings anymore. Many Labour voters, as we know, Leavers, are going to vote Conservative, not because they're Conservatives, but because they want to have uh, to leave the European Union. Many Labour voters are now going to vote for the Lib Dems because they want to have a second referendum and because of the anti-Semitic question. And many Brexit Party voters are, in fact, worried and in a panic and some of them are thinking of voting Conservative, some of them being disenfranchised by us, the Brexit Party, because we chose to stand down so many candidates um, and give a, an opportunity to block that Remain Alliance taking over Parliament. That means that the whole left-right political allegiance thing doesn't work anymore. And those who try and write off levers as somehow reactionary bigots really need to think again and rethink politics and how we can change politics for good. So one contribution to that, and this is my final thoughts, is that myself and my uh, fellow MEP, Henrik Overgaard nielsen have uh, decided to deploy some of the EU budget and actually bring out uh, this pamphlet. This pamphlet is called Reclaiming Democracy, the Left Case for Sovereignty. Because those people who imagine that leaving the European Union is somehow a Tory cause, that somehow can be claimed by the Conservatives or when the left try and denounce it as far right are just so, so wrong. There is a fine left-wing tradition of self-determination, national sovereignty and popular sovereignty. I hope that you'll read the pamphlet. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the general election campaign, which I know is dispiriting because it's not about principle so much as trying to stop the worst thing happening, which is not exactly inspiring. But realise that if we want to change the political landscape for good, we have to create a space for democratic discussion and debate. And calling people out as racists, labelling them as anti-immigrant is absolutely an anti-democratic thing to do, which is why I denounced the anti-far protesters in Plymouth last night, and why I can't stand the hypocrisy of being lectured to about anti-racism, the need to clamp down on and ban and censor hate speech here at the EU, when in fact what they're really about is just having a same old technocratic political regime that cuts out ordinary people's democratic voices throughout Europe. Read the pamphlet, get in touch.